Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. This is following suit from my train wreck of an unboxing video where I misidentified some of the materials. I had put something into the box that wasn't in the box because I had started the video and then restarted it. And then it culminated in Hammy just hopping right up on the desk and just, um, just taking over the video. So I'm going to go into the individual art supplies and kind of do initial review and impression with them. The creme de la creme, the main reason I made this purchase from uh, St. Louis Art Supply is the Kakamori, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, um, the brass uh, dip pen nib. From what I understand, they make three different ones. They have the brass, they have the stainless steel, and I think they have glass. The brass is recommended for more art and drawing purposes. I guess there's more um, variation of the line, or maybe the nib is a little bit wider. While the stainless steel, I believe, was advertised for more writing. I don't usually use dip pens for writing. I don't really have nice handwriting, but I do enjoy using dip pens for um, for drawing. And it's fun like experimenting with map making and um, then drawing on top of it and painting on top. So this comes in this small little box and it has some instructions that are in Japanese. And on the other side, we have some instructions in English. The box that the order came in, it was really well packed. And um, I had to pause the camera because the cats were then trying to get into that box and to play with those papers. So the other side, we have the English um, writing uh, recommendation on the writing angle, 45 degrees, maximum writing angle. Removing the nib from the holder, gently pull while turning to avoid loosening the nib mount. Strong impact. The precision made nib may compromise ink flow. Let's see. Anything else? Residual moisture may cause rust to form, so you want to be careful with that. Um, remove the nib holder and dry thoroughly before storing. To insert a nib holder, remove ink or uh, water collected in the nib ferrule for the ease of attachment to prevent the buildup of dry ink in the grooves, rinse frequently with water during use. To remove stubborn dry ink, gently scrub in water with a soft toothbrush. If using detergent, a pH neutral ne detergent is recommended. Avoid alkaline detergents. It will damage the surface. Brass will develop a natural patina over time. Okay, then they have a QR code, QR code if you need to look up more info on that. So first things first, I do have a kind of random collection of dip pen holders. I did not purchase the Kakamori uh, dip pen holder. We'll just see if these fit. This one is actually for a quill nib, or the crow quill nib, so it's a thinner one, so it won't fit that. Let's see, this one came in a package with different cheap nibs. Let's see if it's being stubborn. All right, I'm not gonna force it into anything just yet. Here is another crow quill. This must be, what, the blue pumpkin nib. I'm trying to grab by the base. There we go. We'll see how that, okay. Does it want to fit? No. Let's see this one. This one's a cool one. It comes apart right here. I think I inherited this one from my friend's grandma. This does feed some. So I'm not sure how much the overhang is going to be. twist it down into place and is it bending causing any issues I don't think so 
let's play around a little bit more with this one, see if we can get it in. There we go. That doesn't seem to really want to go deep in. There we go. All right. So I guess just twisting and playing around, and then maybe there's a little bit of gunk lying in it. So it fits this guy. And maybe I'll have to soak these if there's some gunk taking place. And it fits this guy. I feel like these ones are still sold. I feel like I've come across that. Okay. Here it receded the best, so I'll just use this fella. Uh, the different ones, uh, the holders, I think people have different preferences just for comfort, etc. There's some really beautiful handmade ones on um, Etsy and other sites. And I had one off of Amazon, but I think that one broke. I just want to point out, this is one that I inherited from my friend's grandma. And you can see that the cut doesn't go all the way around. It's just partial cut. So I don't think this would fit like vintage, vintage nibs holders. It, it won't fit vintage nib holders because they only have a... Uh, Crescent Moon's hand. Oh, hammy. Oh, we got a bottle of ink open, don't we? Oh, no, bud. Bud, we cannot do that. Oh, God. You good? Oh. hammer a ding dong That was a close one. Okay. So, vintage, like, antique nib holders will only have the Crescent or the Moon, I think. Um, you're going to need one that has a full opening all the round and you're going to need one that is, um, going to fit and I'm surprised that it doesn't fit in some of them. So I'm not sure if it's tolerances or what, or like in this case, it's not wanting to go back in. So just prepare for that. They do sell the proprietary one. So would that one work better? Not sure. So I have an open bottle of ink here, hammy, and I'm just going to dip it right in. This is the Platinum Carbon Ink. So I'm not going to, let's not wipe off the sides or anything. This is mixed media paper. Let's see what type of lines we can get. Okay, so fairly consistent if I'm just drawing cross hatching. This is extreme angle. So we're changing the angle that it is with the paper affect its width. This is all one dip with straight vertical. We do get some line performance. On an angle, you get line performance, uh, extreme angle, kind of rolling it around, you get a thick line. This holds a lot of ink. Okay, so that was all one dip, and just playing around with just line variation from it. I'm going to turn this around, and we'll actually kind of sketch something. Let's a little foreground. The reason I'm doing foreground is I have an excessive amount of ink on the nib and I'm going to get thicker darker ink I'm assuming in the beginning. So get the texture there and then move my way into the background. Just for a quick sketch. You can see we pretty easily can get a variety of widths. And then from there, get the illusion of a sense of depth taking place. I believe in a previous ink video, I had played around with the uh, Rapido metrics, the core and nor. 
um, and I used the 0.35, the one, and then a brush pen uh, to get the illusion of depth where the thinnest was for the background, the one was for mid-ground, and the brush pen was for foreground. So it holds a lot of ink. Definitely get line variation. This is my first time playing with it, so that is my initial impression. I didn't do any cleanup on it. Um, sometimes with dip pens, you're gonna have your manufacturer oil on it, and they have different ways of cleaning manufacturer's oil off of it. I believe one trick is simply sticking the nibs in a potato. Another trick is scrubbing with a toothbrush. And I'm looking for a fresh page for us to. Okay. So sense of depth is there due to the line width. Um, let's apply it to something other than landscapes. Let's maybe do like a Chinese brush painting theme. Or we'll do a Japanese brush painting theme since it's uh, Japanese made. Okay. Here is my trunk of Japanese blossom. A lot of expressive lines coming out of it. Have our branch off. We'll see how many times we have to dip. So far, there's been none. Use the lighter, less ink for a background secondary tree. branch off here and that do lighter thinner brushes coming off branches and this is just a rapid sketch from my imagination of a topic I haven't done in quite some time and we'll just very quickly get some um, ideas of blossoms out. Now once again this is just one dip and you can see that it's very faint at this point but I'm taking advantage of that faintness at this point to get an illusion of um, changes in uh, just variation and, and depth and focus. Now that I dip it back in I'm going to get a larger quantity of ink coming out start working closer just um, simply just doing the hook marks to give the petals just a little bit of stems a part of me has the thought that if you were to go and get both nibs the stainless steel and the um, brass. You can use the brass for the big marks, the initial sketch in, and then from there use the stainless steel for uh, thinner application for kind of this finer drawing points. But I'm still learning about this tool. I mean, this is my first use of it. I didn't have to do any initial cleaning in the sink. Um, I think I mentioned nibs will get cleaned, but you can use potatoes. You can use, um, I think toothpaste and a scrub brush is what some people will use for um, dip pen initial cleaning. I probably dipped it a little too deep and got it on the sides, and that's that's on me. That's why my hands are dirty with it. I 
I do recall seeing besides the nib dip, the holders that the company itself puts out um, there's one with like a cap I don't know if they put it out or somebody else but I did do recall somebody commenting and saying that that holder worked with the nib So just a quick sketch. See a lot of a variety within it. Um, it feels vaguely reminiscent of working with a stick. I, well, I haven't used a stick, but um, it, it looks as though uh, some of the artwork that I've seen where people have used sticks would do that. Let me put this on the side for a second. I think I'd have a bamboo reed pen right here, which I am not prolific in. And we'll just kind of use that to compare. Right with script on it. Let me write bam boo read. Just in case I put a photo there on it. Okay, so you can see definitely a difference in the flow and the look. And I had taken out some other pen nibs. Let's see. This is the Browse Rose. So we'll do the Browse Rose. Of course, uh, paper is going to affect it. Um, especially like the pointier dip pens. That's mainly due to the fact that it'll catch the paper and this is just um, mixed media paper. type of line variation we can get and now we're pretty much devoid of ink I'm not even gonna try to write around that one with this one so that is rose and last but not least we'll try the pumpkin I don't have a um, I think it's a zebra G is the common one for cartooning. I'm, I don't I don't do the cartooning. These are all different ones that I picked up to experiment with in the past. And we'll see how this is. This is the blue pumpkin. I'm probably putting too much pressure on it. So those are people that are calligraphy people and writers will probably know about all these nibs already and can obviously handle them a lot better than I can but you can see how quickly the ink is uh, dumped and how quickly you'd have to dip it again I could actually grab I don't have any out and about as well for the uh, crow quill but that's just going to be a thin line so, let's see. Let's remove this guy. We'll kind of do our summation of it. Okay, that's all the ones we had used. There is some rust on the bottom of this fellow, so there must be some condensation in the one holder. Okay. So, in summation, this guy is going to hold a lot of ink. 
And so far we've just played around with the platinum carbon ink um, for fountain pens. But I really like it for drawing. It's a really good ink. Um, we tried the bamboo reed. And you can see how that flowed and then it dumped some ink out. We used the rose, a common, I guess, calligraphy nib. And you see how quickly that ran out. And that was, you know, trying to push the lines. And once again, I'm not a um, calligraphy writer. And here's the blue pumpkin. We saw the same thing. Oh, this was all, I think, two dips, maybe two or three. So the ink quantity holds quite a bit. And the variation of the line itself is um, quite prominent. And you can exploit the fact that as you use it, and as you get to the very end, you just have that lightness there. And that lightness is really um, can help affect the feel of it. Now, I'll grab some water and just kind of wipe it down. I'll probably run some water over it to clean it out. In cleaning, I haven't tried cleaning it yet, but these grooves remind me of the glass dip pen and how things will want to dry in those grooves themselves. I believe uh, in reading in the packet in the beginning, it had said just um, frequently dip in water to prevent drying without, within it. So that's something to keep in mind. I do have a mixture that I had made to clean dip pens, but the, um, the instructions with cleaning said to avoid or to have something that's pH neutral. I think I'm not, I don't really have a background in chemistry and I had some ammonia, I think in my cleaning solution that I made or some soap and I don't know if that's pH neutral, so I'm not going to use that on it. I'll just run some water from the faucet. Okay, so hopefully that hit every avenue and comparison whenever we were looking at um, simply just the carbon platinum ink the um, and, and the other quills. So I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you'd like me to experiment with because I am going to experiment with water and the picking it up and seeing how that works. And if there's anything else you'd like me to try with it, for example, gouache, which would probably have to be watered down quite a bit, and we can play from there. Uh, $45, $47, is it worth it? For the mark making and the potential, I would say so far a tentative yes. I haven't explored it deep enough to see how it works with other um, mediums. That note, if you like this channel, if you like these things, I have a whole bunch of links down below where you can help support this channel. All right, have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.